here's my thoughts. I need to figure out how to get a three degree uh, cut on there, okay? And I want something that I can, you know, pretty much just drop in and make it fairly uh, repeatable and uh, fairly easy and simple. And it doesn't have to be perfect. The three degrees needs to be fairly close. Um, and it needs to be, you know, somewhat close on the rotation here, okay? So that's partly just going to be a, an eyeball thing. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to face this off. I'm going to tilt it at three degrees and make a little notch in it so that this will sit in there. Okay. And this is wider than the aluminum. So I'll put a shorter parallel in, drop the aluminum down below the surface uh, so that this is still sticking up. But then I can clamp it with the... Uh, Clamp it with the vice jaws. No clue at this point. I, I, I see it in my head working. Uh, we'll see whether or not it actually works. I don't have a uh, one of those sign bars or anything like that. I do have a couple other things to do angles with that I could set at three degrees and stuff, but I'm kind of thinking that uh, um, I'm just going to set this on here. And I don't need to pick Alt-0 because it's 0, 0.0 right now. Okay. So, let's uh, tilt it up at an angle because what that's going to do tilting this side up is going to give me a pocket like this. Uh, um, might be easier for me to yeah because that way I can hold it space wise in here it'd be easier for me to put this in from this side and work the clamp with my left hand um, that just might be the, the ticket and I'm kind of thinking with using this cutter I should just be able to run back and forth on the Y uh, so let's see here so anyway I've Let's uh, check it. Ha! <laughs> 3 .0. Man. Some of us are blessed. Guys like me are just lucky as hell. Now, if I was doing this on the CNC, I'd, I'd probably put several notches in it. Um, because it would easily run between the two. I don't want to load up three and then have to turn, sit here and turn the cranks. Uh, I want to just load up one, you know, turn the crank one way, load up another one, turn it the other way. Uh, so I'm going to do it fairly close to the middle there, so that way when the vise clamps down on the dowel, it, uh, well, it, it should be balanced. You know, it won't pitch one way or the other too much. So I'm hoping just to get enough reference there that, you know, I can put the dowel, drop it down in there, and I got a lip to catch it on. This one may be too short. Ah, uh, not short enough. That's definitely too, definitely too short. All right, a little more figuring out here. Basically, uh, there's nothing... I have one between these two, but I have them set up for the lathe for something different, and uh, I don't feel like taking them apart. Okay. So this one in here... Oh, that's the... Uh, yeah, that's that's the taller one. I need it to go down... All right, so I need that top 
about an eighth, three thirty seconds, about a hundred thou. Okay. What a catch, huh? So we're gonna cheat here. Not, and you know, hey, none of this stuff is cheating. It's just a creative way of doing it. So I'm gonna zero my Z right there. And then I'm gonna come over and touch it on the top here. And that is 0.276. So I need to take 0.375, basically uh, 3 eighths of an inch, uh, off the underside, and then it can sit on this parallel. And it'll be recessed to the depth, depth I want. So, um, um, so since that's going to be recessed, i got to put it on a taller one. There we go. And we'll zero it out. Well, let's see how it likes 55. All right. Um, this is a, a cheap, you know, caliper veneer type uh, setup for the DRO here for my... Uh, z-axis and and I'm not sure uh, if you didn't know this or not you can hold the button in and it will uh, it'll start counting so since I need to go down to negative 150 let's hold the button in for a bit and boom and it starts going pretty fast so and then after that it's uh, one push per half thou okay Just for a little sanity check, let's uh, pop that out of there real quick. Let's put the shorter one in. Oh yeah, we definitely got a little bit more to go. Yep, definitely want to go down. Oh, according to this, I've only got another twenty-five thou to go, but uh, I definitely have more than that to go. Probably closer to hundred thou. So let's run it down another. 50,000, we'll check it again. Yeah, I like that because I'm actually just up over center there, so I don't have to worry as much about this thing popping out because uh, it's only grabbing the last half and everything else is above the vice jaw. So, uh, I like that. I think I'm going to leave it about 10 thou. What I did was uh, I brought it over and I touched this tip down right here toward the end. Okay. Because uh, if you look at this profile, see how close that is to the end there? So that's about the height I want. And if my three degrees is correct, we should see something like that on this end. Go hit it on the wire wheel, the Scotsbrite, that kind of thing, and see what it actually looks like. Looks like. 
All right, this is the one we just made. All right, you can see how it goes in there. There's the ramp. So you can see how it's gonna jam that in there. So, okay, that's pretty well centered, so. So I can get it to slide back and forth, but there's no noticeable rotation. Uh, and here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that little tap right there is all it took. So you, you can see, I mean, that's just about perfect. There's, there's some head sticking out here, and this will be domed a little bit most likely. Uh, and then uh, perfect amount left on the other side there to put a nylock or um, lock washer. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Now the question is, is can they be repeated over and over again? That's better. Now it's, it should go all the way through. If it doesn't, it at least needs to go through, you know, to where it's flush. And you kind of test it. You put it in and then we'll put the pin in. And when it locks down on the pin, it needs to lock down before, you know, this needs to stick out further than it did before. So there's that. Uh, oh, interesting. With that much play in there, you may want to just do this loosely and not do, not tap it and tighten that down until after the, the arm's in and everything's done. Or make sure you center it to start with. <laughs> okay, look at that. All I did was just push it in with my thumbs a little bit extra there. And uh, that's locked. Oh. All right, there's two. Okay, this one hitting here. Now that I'm now that I'm looking at it, I just figured it out. Uh, what it is is the one on the right is a little longer, so this end would have been a little further down, and it wouldn't have hit. And so, if you look at where the taper is going across there, uh, that's about the same place it would have hit. Um, you know, if it was registered to, to the screw end, uh, it would have been fine either way. You know, it would have ran off the, the end there and not uh, come to a, a point. But uh, I'd come out the same, well, yeah. Anyway, these will be cut much more precise length. These two are basically just prototypes, just a, uh, what's that called? Uh, proof of concept. So, so, yeah, that one's a hair shorter than stock, and the other one's uh, pretty darn close. So, um, that just has to do with how much I faced off and stuff like that, how accurate my bandsaw cut was. So, 